Hello, everyone. Behind these walls is a hidden treasure. The buildings and gardens that bring the pioneers who made the Coachella Valley into our lives. So stay with us and come with us as we enter the Coachella Valley History Museum and honor the memory of Dr. Ronaldo Carrion. The Michael H. Lord Gallery in Palm Springs is proud to support public television. Learn more about our paintings, photography, and sculpture at michaelhlordgallery.com or at our North Palm Canyon location. Michael H. Lord Gallery, an oasis of contemporary art since 1978. Thanks also to Palm Springs Life for 50 years, California's prestige magazine. The Palm Springs Air Museum, a nonprofit educational institution whose mission is to exhibit, educate, and eternalize combat aircraft and our veterans. In addition to flying aircraft, artwork, and library sources, perpetuate American history for future generations. The Camelot Theaters, bringing you retrospective documentary and art films, foreign, and award-winning motion pictures. Dr. Betty Baxter, certified life coach and consultant. Cash Baxter, the Betty M. Barker Trust, SERP and John Conti Foundation, the Stephen Philibosian Foundation, supporting the arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman, supporting the arts and the Palm Springs Art Museum. Oh my goodness, there's the mayor of Indio and Gloria Rodriguez. Hi, Hi Elaine. I know, I know your husband's on the board. Yeah. Doug Holmes is on the board here of the museum. You know, this is just such a great cultural gem in India. We are very, very proud of this museum. And I know that you're very, very proud of the cultural things that are happening in the city of India. Absolutely. This is a very diverse city. Um, we are a population of 80,000 and one of the 100 best communities for young people. The largest part of our population are young people. And there's just a wonderful um, amount of really educational opportunities with the College of the Desert here with the Indio Performing Arts Center here and of course this museum is, is really one of the, my favorite places here in the city of India. I understand that one of the things you really enjoy here at the museum is the Date Museum. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite places here. It's an exhibit that was installed here a few years ago, and it tells a history of dates from the very beginning. You know, the Coachella Valley uh, exports 85% of the dates from the United States, so it's really something incredible to see. And one of the only, if not the only, date museum. We have a working date grove, and that's the uh, only working date grove in the world, and I just I think that's something really that we need to be proud of. All right, and now, Gloria Rodriguez. You know, we're going to talk to you later. I want to talk to you at the Dr. Carrion Gardens and see the Dr. Carrion exhibit inside. Yes, I'm going to show you the gardens, so I'll meet you there. Okay. What So now we're in the Dr. Carrion Gardens, and of course, Gloria, another Gloria, <laughs> three Glorias on this show. <laughs> Gloria Rodriguez, you are the executive director of the Carrion Foundation. I am. So will you tell me about these gardens? Okay, well, these gardens were dedicated by the Dr. Carrion Foundation family in 1988, and so they really wanted a space where the community could come, get together, and really enjoy the beautiful garden. And so recently, just this last year, the Dr. Carrion Foundation funded the renovation of the garden. So we redid the whole garden, really cleaned it up, made sure we had native plants here that the Kahuya Indians used. And so when school children come down on tours, they can get a real informative tour of the garden and the different native plants that the Indians use. So it's, it's really a great garden, and we hope the community, you know, can get together here and just a wonderful place for everybody. Well, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about Dr. Carrion because I know I lived here for quite a while before I knew who he was. I knew that there was the Dr. Carrion Boulevard, the street mm -hmm. that leads to JFK Hospital. I knew that there was a park named after him and, and the academy I later heard about. But, you know, I thought, who is this man? So you can tell me because it's, it's a fascinating story. 
That's right. And as you mentioned, Gloria, a lot of people drive down India Boulevard, they see the academy, and they may not know who the man was, but he was a very special man here in India. He was a philanthropist, a pioneer, and uh, he was born in 1900, and he was really one of the first Mexican-American pioneers here in the Valley and one of the first philanthropists uh, here in the Valley. So he actually uh, uh, donated $100,000 to College of the Desert to start an endowment there for scholarships, and that was one of the first large endowments at College of the Desert. So if you ever go to the campus, you'll see that huge huge fountain in the middle of campus that was dedicated to Dr. Carrion and his family for their donation. And he also helped start JFK Memorial Hospital in Indio. So really did a lot. He uh, gave land to Indio, to the city for its water wells, and uh, had a large property here, and then started the foundation, which I am now running, and we give scholarships to students here in the Coachella Valley. And I, as I understand now, I, I'd like to tell the story. I should have you maybe tell yeah. it, but, but it's so wonderful that when he was a child, and he wanted to do things, and he was told by a teacher that he could never be in a profession because he was Mexican. And that made him really go on the quest for education and want to help others. Exactly. Dr. Carrion was born in Texas, in San Antonio, and his mother passed away when he was six years old, so his father made him start working, pulled him out of school at a very young age so he could support the family. Uh, when he was 11 years old, a teacher actually told him, you know what, you're never going to be a professional because you're Mexican, uh, and that really hurt him, obviously, at the beginning, and then it really turned out to be a motivation for him, so he ended up going to college, um, became an optometrist, and then went to medical school, became an ophthalmologist, uh, started to practice in Los Angeles here in Indio uh, and did so much even became an ambassador overseas so his contributions really are large not only here in the Coachella Valley but internationally. It was interesting I think he was appointed by President Eisenhower. That's right and he really helped with relations uh, overseas so with uh, Mexico Spain and he was also an LA police commissioner oh, wow. and so he was so involved in so many different projects uh, with a date festival here in town he he helped with those types of events so he was just everywhere helping out. And, and I know that you you had one of those scholarships. That's right. I got the scholarship. I went to Cathedral City High School here in the Coachella Valley, and I graduated in 1999, and I got the scholarship when I went to USC to Annenberg School of Journalism. Got the scholarship all four years, and that really helped out. As you know, USC is a very expensive school, um, and it was just great to have that support of the foundation to know they were supporting me, they were behind me. Uh, then I went on to Columbia Graduate School in New York City, and you know, going to an Ivy League from a, a small town you know, like Cathedral City was a big deal, and I think just having the foundation behind me always helped give me that motivation. And it also helped another man that we hear a lot about today, and that is Congressman Ruiz. Yes, and he has a very similar story. He grew up in a trailer park in uh, Coachella. Uh, his parents were farm workers, as were my parents, and they really didn't have the means to send him to college. So when he went to UCLA, the Dr. Carrion Foundation funded, helped fund his education. And then he went on to Harvard, became the first uh, Mexican-American to receive three degrees from Harvard. So he's a great success story for us, for the foundation, and we just love to tell his story. Uh, tell me about the wagon wheel. I know it played an important part in Dr. Uh, Carrion's life. It really did. It's very special to us because it's the only wagon wheel that we have that was left from Dr. Carrion's property. So a lot of people always remember his property over on Monroe Street and what is now Dr. Carrion Boulevard. He had a ranch there and it had wagon wheels all around the ranch. And what's really cool about those wagon wheels, they were actually wagon wheels from the uh, covered wagons of pioneers several years ago. And uh, several media outlets declared those a landmark. So those actual wagon wheels in his ranch were considered a landmark because they belonged to pioneers. And uh, after he passed away, they gave away many of those wagon wheels. We eventually were able to get one of those and we brought it over to the museum because it is so memorable, so iconic of Dr. Carrion. And you can see it's in, uh, very old and so that makes it you know that much more special to us. Well, I'm here with Dr. Raul Ruiz, and of course he is our congressman for the Coachella Valley, and Dr. Ruiz is not only a freshman congressman, but he also started his career thanks to a scholarship from the Dr. Carrion Foundation. We are now at the Dr. Carrion exhibit at the Coachella Valley History Museum. Dr. Ruiz, I think it's wonderful. 
that you are here. Well, I think it's wonderful that you're here and that you're really demonstrating all the good that Dr. Carrion was and represents to the Coachella Valley. And as a direct result uh, of the Carrion Foundation, Dr. Carrion Foundation, uh, I'm here today. It's, it's, an, it's a surreal experience. Well, you know, his background and yours are similar in, in many ways. So would you say that he was kind of personally, even before the scholarship, an idol, someone that you really wanted to follow in his footsteps? Well, the, the, uh, the story begins when I was a, a child here in, in Coachella, and my parents were farm workers. Um, I lived in a trailer the first few years of my life. My older brother was the first to graduate from high school, and a high school counselor paid for my college application. And it, it was very difficult for us to even conceive of going to college financially. And it was the help of Dr. Carrion Foundation that acted like the key that opened the door to the American dream for me and my family through the path of an education that really helped. And his story really inspired me because there was no physicians, no, uh, nobody with a graduate degree uh, or an, an advanced uh, career in my family. And knowing someone like Dr. Carrion who came from uh, humble beginnings, who not only became a great physician, but gave back to the community and became a community advocate and leader really inspired me to do the same. And because of that example, and because of the angels through the Dr. Carrion Foundation that believed in a young man's dream to go against the odds and become a physician and come back home, I'm standing here right now before you as a congressman. That's just fantastic, really. It's just wonderful. You know, before we were filming, you told a story about a piece of equipment here that brought back memories of your childhood. Yeah, I, I was really fascinated about about uh, when I saw the glass syringe that Dr. Carrion used. And I have one of those because my aunt gave it to me uh, as when I was gonna graduate from Harvard Medical School. She, she gave me a gift and it was the exact same glass syringe that my grandmother used to inject all nine of her children when they were ill and, and, and back in the day. And so it reminds me of how, of how healthcare uh, was so personable, how it was so community oriented, how it was so uh, built on relationships. And it reminds me of how healthcare should be and how policy and Congress should be as well. That personal interaction with the people that you serve and, your, and the people that you grew up with, like me here in my hometown. And you come back quite often. I know you're in Washington, but you're here. How do you do that? Uh, well, it's, I do it every, every time I have the opportunity. When I'm not voting, I'm trying to be here with the people that I represent because that's the way we build those relationships. That's the way I listen and I learn from all the people in my district that I am uh, uh, fighting so hard to, to serve and make life better for. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you. We are now in the very first exhibit room, and this is dedicated to the Kauia Indians. Oh, there's Gloria France. Gloria, hi, you. Gloria. Hi, how welcome are, to the Coachella Valley Museum. Good to see you. Museum. The two Thank Glorias. You. Yes, the two Glorias. <laughs> and you uh, are on the board of trustees of this yeah. museum. You are also I'm president, president of the Women's Club of Indio and on the planning commission for the city of Indio. You are very busy, and you have your own business. I wow. Okay, you. so tell me where what this room is. Well, this room is part of our uh, Dr. Smiley Tyler um, house, which is a 1926 house. But this is our Kauia room. And this room in particular, we like to have people come in and learn about the history of the Kauia Indians, since they are the first settlers that were here, that, that we are aware of. And we have a really nice exhibit here that we like to share with people. And most of the time you go to a museum and you don't get to touch things. This yeah. is our touch museum. We encourage kids to touch and look at like what a sandal would have looked like for a Kauia Indian, and possibly some of the wreaths that they used, and you know famous things that we have here in the room. What happens when children come and they touch? Do they ever hurt it? 
No, not really. The, everything we have here is made to be touched, felt, and put back. So that's wonderful. Yeah, that's exactly what we want them to do. That's the other thing we like to teach kids about is what life was like for the Kauai Indians. So we always instruct them to look at this boomerang here, for example. And even children as, long, as young as nine would have to go out and hunt for rabbits. And that's how they got their food. They would use, teach the kids to do that. One of the famous people we have here in this photo is Ruby Modesto. She was one of a few women um, um, medicine women for the Torres Martinez Reservation. So that's still very unique that it was a woman uh, that was there. We have a lot of baskets that were designed you know, uh, by the Indians. We have a really nice collection. All of it is made by natural wreaths and colors that they have are natural. They don't dye anything, even to this day. Isn't that interesting? And what about this down here? This is just part of the different kind of bushes and uh, um, you know, uh, plants that were here to show that the plants haven't changed that much in the last you know, several thousand years. Gloria, it's so strange, Gloria, Gloria, back and forth. But the other exhibits that are here, do you want to tell us briefly, of course we're going to visit them all, but what the public can expect when they come to see it? Sure, we have a very nice campus here. We actually do call it a campus. We have people come and take tours and they get to see a beautiful 1909 schoolhouse that's been fully restored. We also have the only date museum in the entire world which shows the history of the wonderful dates that everybody is so popular with out here. And of course, our Dr. Smiley Tyler House, which we are currently in today. There's a sign right behind us that says there are as many uses for a date palm as there are days in a year. And that's kind of amazing. It's an old Middle Eastern saying. And of course, the date palm does go back dates to the Middle Middle East. Yes, it does. It most certainly does. The date has been used as food in many, many ways. Um, many dishes are prepared. Chefs across the, the valley use the date um, at many events. But what's really special about the date is you can learn about the history of the date here at this um, incredible exhibit. The, the date industry here in the Coachella Valley is an economic boon. It is a $50 million industry here, and it is very special to us. You know, the first shoots were brought across from the Middle East over 100 years ago. And as you can see, across our entire Coachella Valley, you see many, many date groves. And again, I'm especially proud of the fact that we have here at the Coachella Valley History Museum the only working date grove in the world. And I just I think that's wonderful for children and adults to come and see the history. It's fabulous, really. And I, I, there's so much to see. Costumes, uh, equipment that was used for the dates, and just so much. You know, it's very fascinating. And it's just one element of the progress that the city of India has made in terms of tapping into and exemplifying the culture of our city and our community. You know, the Coachella Valley Arts Center in, in downtown India is really quite a wonderful place. And it is yet another place where people can um, learn about history, understand the culture, and understand how art and history and culture make this community an absolutely thriving community and the place to be. looking all around here and now we get to sit and relax in the gazebo. You have weddings here. Yes, we do. This gazebo and our grounds, we just love to have events here. It's a beautiful setting and we love to showcase our grounds. We will have private parties, weddings, quinceañeras, all of the above. It's part of our entire compound. There's so many interesting things to see. The agriculture part is 
fascinating. Yes, part of the Smiley Tyler House, we have a room dedicated to the agriculture and the water of the Coachella Valley. Agriculture, of course, is very important, but water, of course, we couldn't do anything without it. So it talks about how we preserve our water and how important it is and all the different uh, systems that we have in place. And the Coachella Valley Water District has a system put together that you can touch a button and it'll tell you a lot about the water. The kids just adore that. Court rulings and fragile ecosystems contribute toward making some water sources less available. Population and of course the railroad. There wouldn't possibly be an Indio or a built up Coachella Valley if this hadn't been the place where the railroad was the center between LA and Yuma, I think. Correct. In uh, 1877, the Southern Pacific Railroad came out and started to work on doing that. Um, Albert Tingman is considered the father of Indio because he actually was part of the construction boss for the railroad company. And without him, you know, Indio and the station wouldn't be here. The original station, which was out on Indio Boulevard, uh, burned down in 1966. We were able to salvage some of the uh, pieces of equipment and furniture from there. So we have some original pieces here that we, we love to showcase and show people what it used to be like to manage a train. And what about this a great kitchen? Oh my, I love the kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen is probably my favorite room in the entire museum. It's a 1926 kitchen. We have original tile. It shows you how people would have lived back then and what a kitchen would have looked like back then, which is very different than what we're used to today. But it is definitely one of my favorite rooms. We even have an old-fashioned icebox and stove. And some kind of a butter, butter churner. Yes, we have a butter churner. We have some really neat um, old... Um, toasters that I really like to show people and we talk about how ice was delivered to the Coachella Valley and the original ice company was the Coachella Valley Ice Company which is still in existence today. And what do they do today? They still deliver ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just don't go to the market and pick it up. <laughs> Actually they do more commercial ice deliveries I think than they do um, to private residences but back then you got your ice from the ice man like you got your milk from the milkman. Well you know we looking at the past and yet there's a great deal that has to do with the future that happens here at, at the museum. And that, of course, is the schoolhouse. Correct. We just love our 1909 schoolhouse. It has been restored. So people come in and they just say, oh my god, this is so interesting. We have old desks. We actually have chalkboards, which you don't see anymore. And we talk about what schools used to be like here. Um, it used to be a one-room schoolhouse, so the kids would go from kindergarten through 12th grade all in one room. Um, we currently do a lot of children's programs here because we, of course, believe children are the key to the future. We have a Young at Art program that we um, put up in the summers. It's a summer program, and they teach kids everything from clay work to drawing to painting, and it is probably one of the funnest programs that we do. One of our newer programs we've probably had for a couple of years was started by Dr. Priscilla Porter, and she wrote um, all of it from scratch, and her idea was to teach kids about local history, not just the history of the state or the county or the country. So part of it, the kids come in and they do a living history. They actually become one of the pioneers. They dress the part, they can talk about it. It is probably one of our best uh, programs that we have out. And it's always in March, so if anybody can come out, it's, it's a great way to watch the kids and see how much they learn. Okay, now, talking about the future, I know that there's going to be some kind of a promenade connecting the buildings. Definitely. Right down part of our compound we have two sides and um, what used to be a street is now uh, what we call the promenade. We have a huge design in final approval stages at the city to create a homage to all of the different agricultural uh, industries that are out here. So they would talk about the grapes and the bell peppers and of course water. It's all designed out. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous when we get done and we are really looking forward to beginning a campaign for that project to take place. I just want to tell everybody I really enjoyed you know having this visit with you here and sharing our museum and I hope everyone will come out and take a look. They would be pleasantly surprised at how much energy there is behind the wall and we really look forward to seeing everyone here. You know we've heard about the what's happening with the future here at the museum and the young people who come and see the old schoolhouse and all the programs for the very young to learn about the past to make way for a very wonderful future. And of course we know that the Dr. Carrion Foundation scholarships also are creating people who are enhancing our future. And so I want to thank everybody here for being with us. And thank you for being with us. We know that we're in very good hands behind as I said in the beginning, behind the walls that lead into this museum here in Indio. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time.
L.H. Lord Gallery in Palm Springs is proud to support public television. Learn more about our paintings, photography, and sculpture at michaelhlordgallery.com or at our North Palm Canyon location. Michael H. Lord Gallery, an oasis of contemporary art since 1978. Thanks also to Palm Springs Life for 50 years, California's prestige magazine. The Palm Springs Air Museum, a nonprofit educational institution whose mission is to exhibit, educate, and eternalize combat aircraft and our veterans. In addition to flying aircraft, artwork, and library sources, perpetuate American history for future generations. The Camelot Theaters, bringing you retrospective, documentary, and art films, foreign, and award-winning motion pictures. Dr. Betty Baxter, certified life coach and consultant. Cash Baxter, the Betty M. Barker Trust, SERP and John Conti Foundation, the Stephen Filibosian Foundation, supporting the arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman, supporting the arts and the Palm Springs Art Museum.